pleasant day everyone my name is Griselda and today I will be presenting the educational system of Cape Verde let's have some basic information about Cape Verde or Cabo Verde in their language their official country name is Republic of Cape Verde and they are part of the African continent their capital is called Praia or beach in English. The current population is 554,204 and they are the 172nd most populous country. The official language is Portuguese and the other language that they are using is Criollo. The country Cape Verde has been colonized by Portugal in the mid 1400s or early 1500s and they've been independent on the 5th of July 1975. The government system is a multi-party system since 13th of January 1990, meaning they have two leaders, which is the president and the prime minister. Their president since 2011 is Jorge Carlos Fonseca and their prime minister is Ulysses Correa E. Silva. Their currency is called Cape Verdean Escudo or CVE which is 0.52 and the Philipp Philippines currency. Their education department is Ministerio de Educação e Desporto Cabo Verde or Ministry of Education and Sports of Cape Verde. The literacy rate is 87.6%. Let's talk about the people of Cape Verde or what they call Creole. The overwhelming majority of the population of Cabo Verde is of mixed European and African descent and is often referred to as Mestizo or Criollo. If you'll notice, they have very interesting features. Although they are dark-skinned, dark most of them have blonde hair, blue or green or gray eyes, and they also have prominent jaw lines. Because of that, they are considered as one of the most beautiful, beautiful people in the world. And um, you'll see them mostly as models in fashion industries. So let's talk about their learning environment. Textbooks have been made available to 90% of children. There is a lack of teaching materials, uniforms, and school materials, degraded school furniture, and all sorts of needs. No libraries at the public primary school, neither a school library nor a small library in any teacher's classroom. There were school libraries at all the secondary school, but it's used to study in, not to read books. It means that Students will just get inside the library, probably to talk with their peers, but not to hold a book. There are a scarcity of classrooms with low habitable conditions for children who attend from preschool to sixth grade. The education system is also suffering from lack of funds to purchase book and other school materials, though these shortcomings are expected to be overcome as the country's economy continues to improve and a lot of foreign aids pour in from other countries. This picture shows a preschool graduation which is held outside a classroom and you'll see a mountain or probably a desert at the back. Unlike in the Philippines, a graduation even preschool graduation is grand and the place where the graduation will be held is well decorated on the second picture it shows a typical primary public school in cape verde if you'll notice there are no proper decoration 
on the walls. There are just pictures, drawings, or probably some of the outputs of their students posted on the wall. Unlike in the Philippines, before the start of the school year, the teachers will make it a point that the classroom are well decorated with designated walls for subjects. It's almost like a, a contest and the most well decorated classroom will be the winner. Let's now go to the online setup of Cape Word. Most of the country's elementary schools do not have computers for students to use and the internet access is very limited. However, the government support ICT in schools. That's why they have encouraged the private sector to establish computer maintenance companies, ICT training schools, and secretarial and communication services. Nonetheless, only an insignificant fraction of the population can use these services because the majority of families are poor. The ICT in tertiary education is also supported by the government and the private sectors. That's why all higher education institutions have computers and computer laboratories. University of Jean Piaget boasts 162 computers, 20 projectors, and 5 panel projectors. The university runs ICT degree programs and professional courses, including Cisco certification programs. But we are talking about private university here. And what about the learning setup during COVID-19 pandemic? The schools were closed till October 30th, 2020, and the government submitted to the group of partners a project to help implement the necessary actions within the scope of pandemic, such as the distance education program with classes through television and radio. So with the help of UNICEF, they have provided TVs to students in remote areas who have access to electricity, train radio and educational technologies team in charge of creating a new studio TV education program. And they use the interactive radio instruction or IRI. It is an instructional approach that uses one-way radio to reach students and teachers, or in this case, students and their parents, via pre-recorded interactive lessons. The school year in Cape Verde runs from October to July. The preschool daily activities includes playing games, basic introductions to numbers and the alphabet, reading popular poems and short stories by the teacher. Primary students study Portuguese, language arts, basic science, mathematics, social studies, art, and physical education. Secondary students' curriculum includes Portuguese, basic English, history and geography, science, mathematics, physical education, and vocational training including agriculture. Some secondary schools offer computer classes. Let's now have the curriculum and pedagogy of Cape Verde. It is mandatory for Cape Verdean children ages six to 14 years old to attend primary school and for those between the ages of six and 12, the education is free. Preschool is not compulsory and mostly organized by national and foreign governmental and non-governmental organizations. The educational system operates on a structure of six years of primary school and six years of secondary school. The secondary system consists of three cycles of two years each. Three-year vocational training follows 10 years of schooling while university education may take three to four years. In 2018, the amendments of basis of the education system extended compulsory education from six to eight years of schooling. 
and secondary education became from 9th to 12th grade, being subdivided in general and technical way. This is how the educational structure of Cape Verde looks like. It will start in preschool, that's below six years old, and this is not compulsory. The next level will be primary, that will start from six years old, and that's for eight years. This is compulsory and free of charge. And then the next level will be the lower secondary, that is for two years, which is general. And the second level for secondary is the upper secondary, which is a technical or pre-university preparation. And if they want to take vocational after grade seven, they will be able to proceed taking courses for vocational for three years. And then in college, which is they call tertiary, uh, they have four years for a bachelor and two years for a master and a year for a doctorate. Let's talk about the tertiary universities in Cape Verde. There are two most popular university in the country. The first one is the Jean Piaget University of Cape Verde. This is the oldest and first private university in the country. It is named after a famous French theorist and is primarily located at the capital city of Praia. This university has both undergraduate and graduate degrees, including continuing education courses or doctoral programs. As what I mentioned earlier, they have computers and laboratories, and they also have the Cisco certification programs. And the next one will be the University of Cape Verde, the country's first public university which came into existence in 2006 as a result of a merger between two colleges, which is the uh, ISE and the ISECMAR. Cape Verde has international schools as well. Most international families in Cape Verde choose to send their children to the international school or abroad. Usually, follow a curriculum model from the US, UK, France, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Schools often provide internationally accepted accreditation, such as the International Baccalaureate. Admission and enrollment procedures vary from school to school. Space is often limited and preference may be given to students based on nationality. Of course, tuition tends to be very expensive based on local standards, but offers high standards of learning. Both smaller class sizes, first rate facilities, and extracurricular. And what about reading or teaching reading in the schools of Cape Verde? Students do not usually own story books at home and they do not read books for pleasure and that the teachers themselves are not pleasure readers. Teachers are exclusively using the government provided reading textbooks and they do not use children's story books as a vehicle for reading instructions. And the practice of using children's books in primary school is rare and the and practical among teachers in Cape Verde. Grades one to three teachers in Cabo Verde most often use a bottom-up approach to reading instructions and teachers in grades four to six most often use a top-down approach, meaning when students could not identify unfamiliar words, teachers simply identify the words for them and just moved on. Approaches are centered in the recitation and memorization of phonetic constructs and word parts. And that's probably the reason why about fourth grade most could not read Portuguese at an age-appropriate proficient level and that perhaps only about one-fourth of their secondary students could read at a proficient high school level.
The learning experience of the students in Cape Verde is not as pleasant as the learning experience of the students here in the Philippines because many children in Cape Verde stop school too soon in order to work despite a higher legal employment age. The legal employment age in Cape Verde starts at 15 years old. However, at an early age of five years old, children tend to start to work so that they'll be able to help their families. More men than women can read and write. More girls than boys leave school early. And the reason being is that many girls are affected by the practice of temporary suspension of pregnant students and don't resume their schooling after they give birth. Although most children have access to education, some problems remain. For example, many students and some teachers speak Cape Verdean Creole at home and have a poor command of Portuguese, which is the language of instruction. There is insufficient spending in school materials, lunches, and books. And there is a high repetition rate for a certain grade. The quality of education is usually poor with an inadequate amount of available materials and too few, mostly poorly trained teachers. For much of the 19th century, education in Cape Verde was primarily undertaken at the initiative of private individuals or groups at a local level rather than state organization. Cape Verde has several learning assessments that they use to gauge the knowledge of their students. First one will be the classroom assessment. This is the usual assessment that a teacher carried out inside the classroom to evaluate students' performance. The next one is the examination. They have the regional test, which is administered to students in grades two, four, six, and eight. And the other one is the general national test that is administered to students in grade 12. They also have the national large scale assessment, which is what they called AFERIDA. And this is to test their Portuguese and math knowledge. As of the moment, uh, Cape Verde has not yet participated in any international large scale assessment. Cape Verde used the grading system scale that starts with 0 to 9, which is fail, and 10 to 13, which is average, 14 to 17, which is very good, and 18 to 20, which is excellent. And for Portuguese, the scale will start at 1 to 9, which is fail, 10 to 12, average, 13 to 15, good, and 16 to 20, excellent. Let's now talk about the stakeholders of Cape Verde. To raise the competency of teachers in Cape Verde, the government, together with the non-governmental sectors, planned and initiated training to improve the quality of teaching and learning in Cape Verde. A training program developed in cooperation with the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, or UNIDO, has helped prepare 236 teachers to introduce entrepreneurship in the Cape Verde school curriculum. The government recently has launched initiatives for improving curriculum and teacher training. And 90% of the teachers have now attended an in-service teacher training. According to a website, a person working in teaching or education industry in Cape Verde typically earns around 217,000 CVE per month. Salaries range from 104,000 CVE to 395,000 CVE, which is the highest average actual maximum salary is higher. Comparing men and women 
in teaching industry in gave birth it says that men earns higher than women by 10 percent although cape Verde's educational system is not as favorable comparing to other countries there were positive outcomes due to the government and people's effort in 1975 only 40 percent of the people were literate while today more than 80 percent of the people are literate an adult literacy rate for 2004 was estimated at about 75.7 percent with 85.4 percent for men and 68 percent for women in 2007 about 5,000 children were not attending school in cape Verde. as of 2015 that number has gone down to less than 1,000 students out of school in 2001 there were about 2,000 students enrolled in tertiary education programs however the nation is unlikely to ever aspire to first world standard and will continue to send its best children to study elsewhere. The government of Cape Verde created an education strategic plan for 2017 to 2021. The plan's objective is to better the quality of education at all levels, including through curriculum reform, the use of ICT and improved access, particularly at secondary and higher education levels. The need to improve the quality of basic education, as indicated in low learning outcomes, gradually increasing universal access to preschool, basic and secondary school, improving quality and relevance of education services, and improving the efficiency and management of the education sector. Children in Cape Verde are treated with affection but are reprimanded strictly for misbehavior. Corporal punishment is not uncommon. Children are expected to work at the family's trade and even if the parents are professionals, children do a good deal of housework. Obedience and deference to elders is inculcated early. It is not uncommon for an adult to grab any child on the street and ask him or her to run an errand. Just like in the Philippines, we have PTA or PTO. In Cape Verde, they have the Association of Parents and Guardians of Education. Aside from attending the usual meetings, parents are part of the decision making regarding the education of their children. Cape Verde might lack in natural resources, but a lot of volunteers and non-governmental sectors are helping the country to succeed from poverty. Some of these NGOs are the German organization DWIDAG. They are helping to develop the ports in the country. The U.S. Peace Corps, they are sending volunteers to work in the education system and local government. The Portuguese aid groups are also present in Cape Verde to help families in schools, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, and the U.S. Cape Verde University Partnership. That will be all from my report about the educational system of Cape Verde. Thank you very much for listening and may you have a great day today.